Greetings, YouTube. Today we're looking at Deadpool. Uh, there we go, Deadpool Soul Hunter. And this collects issues 7 through 12, I believe, of the, of the 2012 Deadpool run. And that cover right there of Deadpool, about to be chomped on by a great white shark, is very cool. Uh, I picked this up for two bucks at a uh, thrift shop, so I thought, eh, you know, for two bucks I'll buy into it. I got the first six and then this second six, six together, so I had a story arc um, and uh, all at once. Now, where this picks up directly after the last one, so episode six ends, this picks up seven, so the story arc continues, but somehow what was really fun in this and had that Ryan Reynolds vibe this was a little more serious. This was more like the first 10 or 15 minutes of Deadpool 2, where Deadpool is trying to kill himself because the woman he loves was murdered. So it's a lot darker. Uh, spoilers here, but there are still things that are cool. There is Ben Franklin's ghost, who's been, apparently been wandering around America for the last 300 years, uh, 200, sorry, 200 plus years rather, since he died. Um, they're trying to save a friend of theirs who lost a body because she died, and her spirit is currently occupying Deadpool's body, not necessarily where you want to be. Um, they did do a nice little bit in here where they actually have a Deadpool adventure, and they bring back the vibe of the old-school art, and then later they switch back to a more or more modern style of, of our art, which I thought was very cool. And... So that kind of an homage thing uh, made me smile. Uh, but this being the Marvel Universe, they're a weird thing. This is, I guess, part of the run where Spider-Man is being occupied by Octavius, you know, Doc, Doc Ock. I never quite figured that one out. Um, so but Spider-Man is a heck of a lot less fun as that. Um, but it was still kind of interesting to see him deal with the world through a different lens, you know. Spider-Man gets interpreted by writers anyway. Well, when we're watching Spider, we'll be watching uh, superhero movies. I'll be. I frequently know far more about the films and the backstories than my wife is because I read comic books religiously for decades. Um, but I am not up to date as anyone as any current comic fans are. Nor was I ever as deep as some people I've known. I know people who give you the entire backstory of characters going all the way back into the 1960s. It's, it's quite astounding. Um, but she'll ask me, well, is that normal for this character to act like that? And, some, and a lot of times I'll look at her and go, depends who's writing them. And that's the reality. Same character can have different powers and different backstories and motivations depending on who writes them, which is one of the reasons that it's so frustrating. It's because it's inconsistent. That's one of the things I like about my friend Scott Wegner's Robo, uh, comic Robo, rather, not Robocop, Atomic Robo, because it's the same guy drawing it and helping and writing it and stuff. It's the same team. It's one continuous arc. That will give you consistency. And that's cool. Um, so this is not as much fun as I had in the first six issues. Now, one of the problems I had in this is that to differentiate all the different characters in here, they use different speech bubbles. And a lot of them are easy to read. It's like white bubbles with black text. Or yellow bubbles with black text. Okay, fine. But a couple of them in here are like pink bubbles with rose text. Or pale blue uh, bubbles with slightly darker blue text. And that low contrast made it difficult for me to read. I didn't appreciate that at all. Um, but it is interesting enough that I'm going to see if I can hunt down... Pardon me, I guess it's in my eye. Uh, that if I can hunt down the next issues... Um, issues... Uh, uh, 13 through 18, because I would like to see this story arc continue. I'd like to see it resolved, because in the, I mean, Deadpool is still carrying around a dead woman's soul inside him, um, and trying to find a way to get her a new body without being immoral. How do you find someone a body? She's a black woman. Are you going to be able to find a black body that isn't immoral for her to occupy? Will it be a black woman? You know what I mean? So, they do pose some interesting things in here. It's a little more philosophically deep than the first issues, but again, less fun. Um, I could actually see Ryan Reynolds pulling this off. Ryan Reynolds can act. Don't get that wrong. He's often portrayed as goofy, but he can act. I've seen him do it. Um, I really loved him in Smoking Aces. 
absolutely love that movie. I think it's one of the best action films that has ever been made. Um, it's just so utterly over the top and stupid. It is so much fun. But it's got a serious tone at moment, t tones in, at moments, and Ryan Reynolds pulls that role off really well. And let's face it, though, he was born to play Deadpool. And I hope we get to see him in a couple of more films before he decides to tire. I wouldn't mind three or four more dead films where Deadpool's in it. Not necessarily dedicated just to Deadpool. The X-Force is going to be done, and I'm hoping he'll be in a number of other ones. And he'd like to do the type of cameos that Stan Lee did. And that would also be incredibly cool. I mean, he does own the suit. He walked off the set with it. It's his. Um, so, if you like Deadpool, I really recommend you checking out the 7 through 12 in this series. And I'm going to see if I can go about getting my hands on the next bundle. Um, if hopefully I can get it cheap. These were cheap. I like cheap. Um, I am a cheap dude. So tell me if you've read these and what you thought about them. Um, and if you agree with me that the first six had a much different tone than the second six. I'd like to think that I'm not the only one that would believe that. That would be nice. Uh, so again, good comics, had fun, would recommend.